Okay, YouTubers, space detectives, space freaks, space geeks, and paranoia police. I'd like to see what the paranoia police are going to say about these finds today, because these are pretty amazing, I would say. And the place to look for them is in this Gigapan by Neville Thompson. Credit to Neville Thompson again. I always credit Neville. Great work here. Lovely Gigapan, this one. Lovely and clear. Lots of detail. Nice and bright. Not too dark in the shadows, so you can see under things. That's good. Lovely. Right. Now, the area of the Gigapan we're looking at is the far right over here. And we have what resemble very much some skulls. More fossilised, encrusted skulls. And they're right over here. Now, if I zoom right out, I'll show you the rest of the pan, just briefly the shape of it. There's lots of crazy stuff in here. I'm going to touch on some of it, but I, I couldn't do all of it today. There's so much in here, I couldn't possibly put it all in one video. So I'm just going to mainly concentrate on this far end over here, where we have what you would have just seen on the cover, this thing. Here. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go full screen because I've taken clips of it already and I'll show you it. This is a reptilian skull. And you can see an eye socket here. This is the nose area. You can see a row of teeth here. And the skull, cranium goes right back, elongated, like many of the others I found on Mars. Uh, very interesting. Now, it's got some interesting details on it. And what was even more convincing about this I'll show you the close up in a second when you see the close up you, you think oh my god um, there's another one over here it's over here Let's zoom out a bit just here between these two larger rocks there's another one this one looks more humanoid but kind of reptilian uh, reptoid uh, who's to say just here see the mouth here let me zoom in close see the mouth here teeth two teeth there this is the nose this is the eye this is the head it's got some kind of horn or something on top here don't really know what that is I'll show you that in a minute in a few seconds I'll show you that up close and there's this rather strange thing here I don't think this is a, a skull but it, it initially it looks like one at first glance but we don't just do first glances on this channel. We look at things properly. And we compare them to all the other hundreds of similar things I've found in the past. There was also this huge thing here. Now, this may just look like a rock. But in fact, if you look carefully, you can see an eye here and a mouth. This is a, a big mouth. Now, I don't know what this represents, whether it's some kind of dinosaur or some kind of marine creature. Couldn't tell you. Not enough detail in it left for us to see. This may be way, way older than these other things. This could be millions and millions of years old, whereas I, th I actually think that this one here and this one over here are much newer. Where's that other one gone? Hang on, sorry. It's down here. There we are, just here. So I think, I think these are probably perhaps only tens of thousands of years old, whereas that big thing over on the left there is probably... Me, who's to say? But it looks like it may be much much older perhaps it's much more eroded there's a lot less detail in it whereas these are in good detail and there's still lots of information to be gleaned from these pictures okay let me show you the folder now i've got a lot of stuff here and i'm going to try and keep this short what else can i say apart from the fact that this is a reptilian skull uh now i showed this yesterday on the uh, Artelian tv mars magazine on facebook the facebook group and people are going pretty crazy about it. Um, it's insane, absolutely insane. The detail is quite incredible. And even in the raw clip here, if I zoom in, you can see those teeth. There's a row of teeth here. Big carnivorous teeth. This was no vegetarian or vegan here, by the looks of it. Uh, size of this, uh, approximately five inches, maybe six. Uh, hard to say exactly, but it's not huge. But it's very elongated, and whether it represents an actual reptoid, as in an upright walking reptilian, it's hard to say. It could do. The skull is very elongated and large. I would I would assume this is an intelligent being, not some.
primitive kind of um, lizard. This looks more like some kind of uh, apex predator type, human, semi-humanoid or reptoid, if you want to use that term. Who's to say? And it does resemble very closely in shape and morphology some of the things that were found in ancient Sumer a long, long time ago, th- many thousands from the, from many thousands of years ago. They weren't found many thousands of years ago. Uh, let me here's the the post on Mars Magazine page here on, on Facebook. Let's go down and show you what some of the people have posted underneath it, which I think is actually very poignant and very similar in shape. Not only do we have a, a reptilian looking head, but we have these kind of strange kind of nodules or, or scales on it as well. People have been trying for years to work out what these are and I think I may have solved it finally, perhaps. This one here is particularly good. Louis put this one up earlier. Um, look at these round sort of scales and stuff. And you've got a long elongated shaped head this is a helmet here which was apparently worn by one of these uh, reptilian very long elongated heads and reptoid reptilian features so there we are now um, I've also got some of these up uh, here as well to look at I'll put some clips of these in at the end of the video with the images but these are really interesting Um, this one here is from Japan this one here Horyuji Temple. Uh, uh, many ancient cultures, in fact, depict these, including in North America. Some of the Native American tribes uh, had, have stories and depictions of reptilians. The Snake Brothers, they were called, I think, by certain tribes. And, of course, you've got uh, similar myths and stories about them in Japan as well. The Far East, obviously, and then we have the Middle East, like ancient Sumer, which is now, I think, Iraq, or that kind of area. Very interesting, these are. Now, these are really old figurines that were made back in the ancient Babylonian civilization, or Sumerian civilization, which would have existed over five, uh, about 7,000 to 10,000 years ago. Very, one of the, probably the earliest, one of the earliest uh, civilizations on Earth. Anyway, I digress. Let's get on with the the pictures here. Um, you can look that up. All you've got to do is look up reptilian statuette or something and Google it and press images and it will come up. So here we are. Now, what this reminded me of, this thing here, let's go to this one first because this is the most incredible one because of the, the teeth de- detail here. And look at the nodules. We have some interesting patterns on on the skull here but also on the on the sort of nose area let's go in close look at these these nodules now that instantly reminded me of something I found a a year or two ago uh, not that far from here which I've put here here we are now this was something I spotted uh, I think about two years ago doesn't have the date on here. That's the date um, of, of the Curiosity Rover image, not the date that I found it. Uh, this is a, what looks like some kind of cat. Now, I thought this was a carving, but this also has these nodules on it. Now, that got me wondering whether these are some kind of reptilian or something hybrids, or per- perhaps something else is going on here. Perhaps... Um, these are mutations or, or some kind of sign of some kind of skin disease. Um, the, the pitting on, on, on this is very, very strange. Now, I initially thought that this was some sort of carving uh, and the nodules were probably down to sort of little barnacles or perhaps little um, simple organisms living on it and, and uh, distorting the, the surface, like, like a shellfish or, or something like that. A lot of this area was underwater, in the distant past, so who knows? That's a weird one, anyway. But I thought it looked similar. That these these kind of bony nodules look similar to the things we see on those ancient Sumerian reptilian 
statuettes. Something to think about anyway. Now, here's the other one. Now, this is also astonishing. Now, I actually found this on the 7th of January uh, a few weeks ago, um, but I was waiting for some better quality images of it before going public with it. I did put it on my uh, Mars Magazine page. Here's the original meme I did. 7th of January. Now, this is taken from a rather poor quality black and white uh, image of the area and it's very fuzzy and there's not much detail in here it's hard to see but I worked out what, what it was then already even from the low quality image you can, set, you can see by the shape and the morphology of the face here the eyes and the nose and the mouth but there's not a great deal of detail but if you look really carefully you can just about make out here that there are some teeth just in here just about see some little dots or details in there but I wasn't happy with it I thought I'll wait I'll sit on it until better images come up, come up. and then of course um, Neville Thompson did a gig plan of it and now we have these lovely clear crisp detailed images of the same thing and I'm glad I waited because what we have now is far superior in detail as is this to, to what I had before so I did spot a lot of these things a, a, a while ago when the images came out. In fact, I've got some gigapans I did myself here, but they're nowhere near as bright or detailed as the one that Neville T's done. So there we are. Um, let me show you a close-up of this uh, other thing here in a minute. And uh, all these will be back in at, at the end of the video anyway for you to look at. So you can pause and look at them in more detail at the end of the video. Here's this large thing that looks a bit like some kind of weird skull, and this looks like an eye. In fact, is that a mount? It, I mean, it may not be, of course. This may just be a funny-shaped rock. But isn't it funny how a lot of them seem to have eyes and mouths in the right places? Um, this could represent some kind of marine creature or something else. Or, who knows, perhaps something like an elephant or something. Maybe there was a trunk here coming off here. It's that kind of size. This is big. This is really big. Uh, and this looks like an eye. You can see like eye detail in here, even, even though it looks very damaged and fossilised and kind of squashed and eroded. Um, who knows? Not really sure about that one, but it is interesting. And, and the fact that there are so many other fossils in the area, you've got to look at these rocks and fossils with an open mind because sometimes it's hard to tell one from the other. Some people like to think that they're all rocks. Some people think they're all fossils. There's neither. You have to be discerning and use a bit of common sense and logic with these things. And, uh, of course, some people would say it's illogical and nonsensical that there would be life on Mars. But, of course, a lot of us don't believe that. And, and I have plenty of evidence to suggest there was. There may even still be there, uh, as uh, the certain people from NASA have said themselves, including... Uh, Bolden, the, the leader of NASA, said it in the past, as I have shown in videos. So there we are. I mean, that was it, really. There, there, there are a few other things which were insignificant and, and uh, I'm not really sure about. Um, but I'm not going to go through those today because we've already gone on for about 20 minutes. So uh, I will show you these again in a second and give you some really good close-ups. But basically what we have here are two reptilian-like skulls. Now, this one is different from the first one. This has a more human shape. But look at the detail in here. You've got teeth that's going close. You've got teeth here. There's the mouth. Now, this almost looks mummified rather than fossilised, but, of course, in the conditions on Mars, uh, mummified heads would probably eventually turn into fossils anyway. It's a, it's a type of fossilisation going on here because of the minerals in the grain, the sulfur and, and the, the high levels of salt. Um, so go back to some of my previous videos if you want to find out more about that and how these processes work. If you go back to watch the, the, the Mars Bear video I did only a few days back, about a week ago, that goes into great detail about how these things mineralise in the, in the very rich mineral sand and dust and mud and become solidified. Okay, so there, there are some interesting processes going on there, and this one is just astonishing. 
Um, I was gobsmacked when I found this and uh, look at the detail. Look at those teeth. This was no vegan or vegetarian. Yeah. And the skull goes right up like this. Now there may be some damage to this. Some of this may have broken off or cracked. But it, it almost looks like some of the, the skull is kind of broken away and you're seeing some of the bit inner material perhaps or inner structure. Who knows? Lots of these things are quite badly damaged and eroded. Uh, maybe this thing was more rounded before. There are some other examples of what are like reptoids and uh, reptilian skulls that I found. I'll put some of those in as well at the end. It's quite astonishing really when you put them back to back. So those will be coming up in a minute. There, there were a couple of other things, but I'm not going to show them now because we don't really have time. I will come back to this in a couple of days' time, probably. Uh, but there are a few other things I want to uh, talk about as well. I'll briefly go on about the rover. The rover had a, a glitch, which has now, I think, been um, sorted out. Uh, the, the attitude sensor was, was not working properly. And basically, that they had to shut the rover down, or the rover shut itself down, I should say. Uh, but they're, they're, I think they were on, on top of it. I was worried that, that we were going to lose the Curiosity rover. Unfortunately, it's the only one, only moving rover on the surface at the moment, so we're told. Um, and if this goes down, it's going to be a, a, another whole year before the next one gets there, um, which will be leaving Earth later this year and landing early next year, in February, I think. So... And there's, but there's also one from the European Space Agency going up there as well, so that would be cool. There, I'll put a link to this article for you to read anyway. It, it, it goes into detail about how the, they fixed the problem, it looks like, with the Curiosity rover, thank God. And uh, I'll, I'll also have um, some of these in at the end, perhaps, and compare some of these images as well. Very interesting. Ancient aliens on Mars. Yes, there were. And... I don't think it was very long ago. I think it was fairly recent. In other words, less than a million years. I actually think less than probably 50,000 years. Perhaps as recent as 20,000 years. Who knows? But it, it's very difficult to tell with these because um, we, we've only got NASA data to go by and of course they're not completely honest with us when it comes to the past conditions on Mars and how long ago it was. And of course they may not actually know a lot about the exact timings of these things and they're probably making estimations rather than accurate statements about the timing of, of the, the cataclysms and various other problems that were on Mars like the, the nuclear war perhaps so there we are thanks for watching everybody clips coming up now